You know what's not smart? Job sites that overwhelm you with tons of the wrong resumes. But you know what is smart? ZipRecruiter.com slash horn. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't wait for candidates to find you. ZipRecruiter finds them for you. Its powerful matching technology scans thousands of resumes, identifies people with the right skills, education, and experience for your job, and actively invites them to apply. So you get qualified candidates fast. No more sorting through the wrong resumes. No more waiting for the right candidates to apply. It's no wonder that ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. This rating comes from hiring sites on Trustpilot with over 1,000 reviews. And right now, my listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash horn. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash h o. RN. One last time, ZipRecruiter.com slash horn. I think smoking always affected my daily life because I was a closet smoker. It really sort of controlled my entire day. My boss is the one that recommended Juul, so I decided to give it a try. You don't get any of the odor of smoking. There's no ash all over your car. I would say give it a try. Get the flavor and satisfaction of smoking without the mess of cigarette ash or lingering odor. Switch to Juul. Check out J-U-U-L dot com slash sports. If you don't smoke or vape, don't start. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Plasma One, George Sedano, his second career appearance on a one-game winning streak. Here to oppose Woody Page, Tim Kalashaw, and Frank Isola. Good afternoon, Go Today, Clay setting the all-time record for threes in a game, wearing a headband that was a prop from a mummy movie in 1937. Also, the NFL trade deadline and college football playoffs first rankings. Let's go around the horn. Go. What was that headband I played Thompson last night? That's like LeBron about it's 10 years ago. It's around the horn, the show of competitive banner. In. Here's Jack Tony Rielli. Play 52, which takes regression back to the mean and turns it on its head, Ben. The all-time record for threes in a game, 14 in just 27 minutes. So once again, we have a story about a warrior not stepping on the court in the fourth quarter to finish off a masterpiece. So the same question applies that it did for Steph Curry last week. Should NBA fans have seen how far he could have put that record away? Is 10 fewer flicks of the wrist for Clay in October really going to have an impact on June? George, you can address that or what you saw from Clay last night. Go ahead. Oh, I'd love to see it. Look, here's the thing. If you look at Clay Thompson, not only did he get you 14 in that particular spot, but let's not forget, he got pulled after 60 points through three quarters just a year or so ago. So this is the Steve Kerr move. He shows mercy. He's not John Kreese of the Cobra Kai reality. He's yeah, not going yeah. to sweep the I'm leg familiar. against his opponents. And by the way... His dad, Michael Thompson, who I work with, Clay's dad, actually thought he could have done better. His response was 14 of 24. He should have gotten 18 of 24. There's a dad for you. All right, all right. Some inside information. Are we going to reward points for working with the father of a player? It's it's, it's it's your job, George. I'm not sure you're getting points for that. I would argue that the set the 14 should be 18. It's the 24 should maybe be 30. Woody Page, would you agree? Did you need to see more of Clay Thompson? Not really. I thought when I heard the result of the game that they brought out a brawl rack and he was doing a three-point contest against a couple of fans from the stands. But he has gone and seen that uh, Kevin Durant went off in the fourth quarter, that uh, Steph Curry had his record kind of night, and he wanted to be not the third guy on the wheel. He wanted to be the first guy for a night. And that's what's interesting about that team. Every night somebody can go off, and it's Clay Thompson. And he was in L.A. recently, and he was talking about me. Maybe at some point in his career, he'd want to come home and be with his father and George. So I think that it was a sign of a guy who has had uh, two previous 50-point games said he can go off like this. Mm-hmm. And as long as he stays healthy, he had some problems last year, that he's a man that they can turn to not only on the offensive end, he may be their second-best defensive player. Everything you said is true, Woody, but the Clay Thompson of this season had the slowest start to his career shooting the three-pointer. So that's another thing to consider yeah. as we go to Tim Kalashaw here. What you see from Clay? And did you want to see more? Yeah, I wanted to see more. As you just said, he went from 14% to making 14 in one night. He probably could have used even a, l- a little more. Uh, a week ago, we talked about Curry coming out after, you know, scoring 50 and three quarters. We wanted to see him score 
60, 65, 70. There's no reason to not see these things. It's not somebody's going to be taking shots. It's not like you can just go out and hold the ball in the fourth quarter, and it's not their fault they're crushing these teams. I mean, it was a great show he put on. I like the fact his teammates let him put it on. He took more shots. Uh, Clay had 29 shots. The rest of the starters uh, had had fewer than 29. And, you know, that's that's Durant, that's Curry, that's Draymond Green. So they knew what was at stake, and they knew what he was doing. But now, hey, one of his teammates will break the record, or he'll break it later this year. Frank Isola. The fight had been won. The battle had been won. They did the right thing. They're sure he maybe could have gone for 70 points. But as George mentioned, he did one score 60 points in 29 minutes. Last night in 27, think about the damage he's done. He once had a 37-point quarter. So use your imagination. Just imagine what this guy could do. And for me, though, his greatest performance on the road, game six at Oklahoma City, 11 threes, 41 points in an elimination game. Yeah. That, well, out of I, all these those games, numbers that's are his surreal number one too. performance. But, guys. Use your imagination. I don't need to use my imagination. I want to see it on the floor. Frank, when you've got uh, 24 points going into buy or sell three, I'm not going to ask you to use your imagination for how many points you're going to get in your last answer. Here, I want to see it in front of me. Here's the difference, though. You know, if you're running up the score like that, someone could take a cheap shot. And there's no reason to do that. I get it. The NBA's changed a little bit. But you got to take him out. That was the problem. Well, hearing your answers here and, and that it was a mercy rule then and not about rest, which, of course, is understandable. I don't think any of you are going to argue that we're going to see this. But this Warriors team right now, with Curry able to score 60 in a night and Thompson able to score 60 in a night and Durant able to score 60, could we be looking at a team that's going to set the all-time point record in a game this season because the scores this season are, are through the roof already? Could we be looking at 186, which is the record, George? 200, is that in play? <laughs> I think 200 is absolutely in play. You don't think all three of those guys... I I was just throwing that out there as a joke. Okay, you do. No, I'm serious. 200 is in play. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Kevin Durant can go for 50 on a given night. Even Paul Pierce has backed this stuff up on the jump recently. There's a guy who actually played and had to play against these guys. If he thinks it's possible, I think it's possible. Woody? Well, I was at that game in which the 186 sure. was scored. That was the Denver Nuggets against the Detroit Pistons 1983 in three overtimes. So if they were in a close game and it went three or four overtimes, they'd easily pass 200. You're always making fun of the league I used to cover and Tim, the ABA, but this is ABA scoring now well, in the that's NBA. Absolutely and people true. are enjoying it. ABA scoring. For Woody Page right now, 14 points in the lead because you covered a game. I was there. You see, George, it's not who you work with. It's <laughs> were you there, Woody Page? Yeah. We'll move on. Showdown 2, NFL trade deadline. Neither dead nor lying. Discuss amongst yourselves. Le'Veon Bell not traded. There's your dead. Demarius Thomas to Houston. He's now opposite DeAndre Hopkins. And Golden Tate to Philly. Essentially a fourth rounder for Thomas. Philly had to give up a third rounder to Detroit for Tate. Timmy, who improved themselves most at the deadline? Uh, I got to go with Philadelphia. I, not by a lot. I mean, there's not an enormous difference between Tate and Thomas, but Philadelphia's been looking for something to get that offense ignited. Uh, you know, they've got it. They made it to four and four. They got a break now, a bye, and, and Tate will give them a little lift in the second half. Uh, as far as Thomas, he's not enough like. Will Fuller to say they just replaced him. Will Fuller was a great deep threat. That's not what Thomas is anymore. But he's a nice player opposite Hopkins. That's still the best team in that division. So I, I like the moves by both teams. Right, guys, Hola. Last season, Carson Wentz led the NFL in throwing touchdown passes to the slot receiver, 16 of them. This year, he's got one. This will make all the difference in the world. And when you're in a conference that has the Rams and you have the Saints, among other teams, you need to get better and and get better quickly. They're good enough to win the division, but to beat the Rams, beat the Saints, they needed to get better offensively. They did that today. It's a great stat about slot receivers there, Frank. How about you, George? I think this is easy. I'm going the other way. I think it's the Texans. First of all, they gave up less. Second of all, Demarius Thomas, they don't need a deep threat, Kalashaw, because they've got one in DeAndre Hopkins. That's a guy that can stretch the field vertically. Mm -hmm. You need a big body. That's what they lack, certainly. And he's got a good quarterback now. Last time he had a good quarterback, he went to three Pro Bowls, as Woody could attest, when he had Peyton Manning. Deshaun Watson was setting this league on fire before we were all raving about Patrick Mahomes. We kind of forget about that particular aspect of it, too. Okay, let's have Woody a test here, Woody. You're, you're put, yeah. being put to the test. Demarius yeah, Thomas a- going to Houston, Golden Tate going to Philly. 
there was a couple of Super Bowls, but we'll take that in Denver. And I think it's Houston again, that the Eagles are better than anybody else in that division, but Houston is sort of clinging to the league, in, in to the lead in a division that's very close. And if you get that uh, first round by because you've just picked up Demarius Thomas to add to that offense when this team is playing against the Denver Broncos. He knows how to work these uh, defensive backs. This is a game that's critical to the Texans, and I think that in the short run, it's going to help the Texans. And in the run of this entire season, this, I think, is a division maker for them. Okay. I mean, interesting, though, you say this, Woody. We're at the halfway point now. Houston is the division leader in one division. The Eagles are not the division leader in the NFC East. They have some work to do, which is why I think they made this trade today. Last word to Sedano after the horn. I mean, Woody's right. The division is winnable, but a first-round bye. Did the Patriots just all of a sudden go, you know, are they not playing in the NFL? Are the Chiefs not playing in the NFL or in the AFC anymore? There's no chance that they'll get a first-round bye. First-round home game, I think, at this point, uh, which we've seen before from the Texans, but maybe that that's where the sky is for them. We'll move on. Wasn't a trade at the deadline, but it's a move the team made. Cleveland Browns firing Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley. And not giving up on the season, just rebooting is what Jimmy has. Speaking of rebooting, (laughs) November 5th, our own show reboot. Relaunching into a new reality. All right, a little self-promotion there. (laughs) Guys, I'm looking for a blueprint for this Cleveland reboot, which is Reboot 17.0. More updates than iTunes is Cleveland franchise. Woody. How is this going to affect Baker Mayfield's growth? That's the first question. Uh, It's not going to affect him whatsoever as far as I'm concerned. Todd Haley is a history of inhibiting quarterbacks, and I think that happened there. He and uh, Haley and Jackson didn't get along. They weren't doing anything, any favors for Baker Mayfield. I think this helps him. Uh, You do the control, alt, delete, and you start over again with a new offensive coordinator, and I think it's good work for uh, Baker Mayfield. Uh, I don't see any problem whatsoever that he's going to get worse than Cleveland is this year. They're not any kind of danger of of threatening anybody to win eight games. George Zidano? Yeah, I would disagree. You look at this Cleveland Browns roster, they've been in a bunch of these games. And Baker Mayfield, by the way, is bottom five as far as completion percentage is concerned. He's one of the worst quarterbacks in the, of the year so far in those particular categories. But here's the other thing. Look at another former one number, number one overall pick like Alex Smith, who went through five coordinators. Now, look, eventually it all worked out for him in the long run. But good Lord, I mean, the first several years of Alex Smith, we were all ready to boot him out of San Francisco. So, yeah, of course it can affect a young quarterback back. Jim Callishaw? I think all this is doing right now for Baker Mayfield is reaffirming, you know, something he already knew. The NFL is wildly different from college football. He'll be on his third offensive coordinator when next year starts and, and you know, his second or, th- well, his third head coach, presumably. So uh, I don't know that it does anything other than that. You really just want him to survive the rest of this season. I just think this is probably the first, first uh, two-man firing inspired by hard knocks. That we've seen. I don't know if this would even happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If the whole world didn't know these guys couldn't stand working with each other. Yeah. Well, let me ask it to you this way, Frank Isola. Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma is downplaying any buzz, saying he has no interest in NFL jobs. But would Riley maybe in some way make sense for Baker Mayfield, or is that maybe too much on the nose here and, and Cleveland should be expanding their search? Well, of course it would make sense because of their relationship. But he said about an NFL job, not right now. Yeah. And obviously, the word is that eventually he could end up with Tim's Dallas Cowboys. So that, that's where he can go. But it is funny that Tim mentioned how they don't get along. And on hard knocks, to me, it was so obvious that both Todd Haley and Greg Williams were trying to get the head coaching job. And one of them ended up getting it. And also, you know, Baker Mayfield did not start the season. So this year was always going to be about development for him. To me, the big thing will be hiring the right coach, right offensive coordinator, and the offseason for him. That'll be where you'll really Okay, see so you don't think the reboot needs to happen right this moment, or it's going to happen, but it can happen slowly. And um, Tim Kalashaw after the horn? You know, I, I think Lincoln Riley makes sense for the Browns. I don't know do. that the Browns make sense for Lincoln Riley. I, I question whether the Cleveland Browns is a better job than the Oklahoma Sooners. And I think the answer to that is probably no. Isola 25, Kalashaw 22, page 19. And the rookie, George Sedano, 16. He wants to tell us who he's working with for points. You know, just tell us about Aria Mateo. That's how you get points on this show, Sedano. Taking a break right here by ourselves on the other side. You know, George and I have kids the exact same age at this moment. A four-year-old and a newborn. That gets you points on this show. My name is Lauren. I'm 33. I didn't want my identity 
to be the smoking mom. My first experience with Juul, I do remember being like, this is good. It's, it's, it's like a cigarette, but not. I don't miss smoking at all. Like, I can officially say it grosses me out. Juul is the tobacco alternative that delivers nicotine satisfaction without cigarette ash or lingering odor. Make the switch at juul.com slash sports. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Your cell. Patriots 25, Bills 6. Of all the football games played last night, it was the only one. 9-6 through nearly three quarters. Patriots finally scoring the two touchdowns. One was defensive. Zero were from Brady, which is one fewer than the number of sex toys that made its way on the field. George, you have a takeaway from the Pats and how they grinded through this game offensively? Yeah, two things, Reale. Gronk, he wasn't utilized very much. Only his second red zone target of the year. He's torn up Buffalo in the pass in Buffalo. 44 catches, 730 yards, 7 touchdowns. And Tom Brady not being blitzed a ton in this one. Same thing the Lions did to them. Not looking good in those situations for the Patriots. Something to That's watch interesting. Out for. Maybe a blueprint. Not blitzing Brady is how you keep the Patriots offense under wraps. Interesting. Uh, Woody Page, how about you? I love you, Buffalo, and your wings. But last night... Derek Anderson, I told you Tony Reale 13 years ago he couldn't play dead in the Western. He still can't. And they had not had a Monday night game since 94. Look forward to the next one in 2032. Okay, not a lot of uh, analysis from that answer, but some jokes. How about you, Kalisha? You know, this I, I wouldn't be totally alarmed if I'm New England because this is the kind of game Buffalo can drag you down into when they get their uh, Monday night home game every nine years. But I'd be a little concerned about that total absence of a running game without Sony Michelle. When Cordero Patterson's your leading uh, rusher, things have got to improve. Frank Isola. To me, it was just one of these nights for the Patriots, and it didn't start out well. You know, uh, Josh Gordon wasn't going to play the first couple of series because the issues that he had showing up late for practice. So it was just one of those nights, remember, for Buffalo, that this was it for them. This was their great big moment, and they hung in tough for three quarters. Just not enough for New England. Buy or sell, too. Ty Montgomery. Responding to his fumble. I've never been a guy to completely disobey what I'm being told. I made a split-second decision on, I don't know if this is going to land on the goal line. So I'm not going to take a knee on the goal line at the half-yard line and take a chance at putting the, putting the game in the ref's hand. You know, I don't think we'd be having this conversation if I didn't fumble the football. Absolutely right there, Ty. We would not be having this conversation right now if you didn't fumble the football. Woody, you buy or sell his explanation? I'm not buying anything he said in there. If you look down, you'd see you were in the blue zone. It was painted blue. And the other point is, if he does bring it out and he returns it 25, 30 yards, you've used up 15 seconds. We've seen what Aaron Rodgers can do with an extra 15 seconds. You were totally wrong. This is a Western Union situation. Send a message. Get rid of it. You think this is a cuttable offense if he defied the coaches or just doing it on its own? Kalisha, how about you? It still seems very defiant, even though he says he's not that kind of guy. He goes on to say, he, I'm not playing much. I was frustrated. I wanted to make a play. So he's pretty much telling you, yeah, I wanted to make something happen, even though they've told you, take a knee if you're in the end zone, which is where he was at. Right, guys, Sola? I'm not going to cut him, but, you know, to hear him try to explain this away, it's simple math. It's Aaron Rodgers. You're getting the ball at the 25-yard line, and all you need is a field goal. There's no explain. If you, We wouldn't be talking about him fumble. Yeah, that's the problem. That's where it all begins and ends. George Sedano. Reality, we know that when players say, thing, say things anonymously, we know they're telling the truth. And everyone is saying that this guy was looking out for himself. Unbelievably selfish. He should be cut. Tim, Tim Kalashaw, he covered Jimmy Johnson. If Jimmy Johnson was the coach of this team, he would have been gone already. Tim, you're the only one who didn't weigh in on this. Is this a cuttable offense for you? I think it is. I mean, I, I, okay. this, this, is gonna, this could easily cost them the playoffs. This could be the loss that, 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 that does it. We'll move on. Buy or sell three. First to... 7-0 in the NBA, the Milwaukee Bucks, Bucks 124, Raptors 109. How Milwaukee seemingly has made the jump, or at least made enough of a jump to win this game without Giannis, who was in the concussion protocol. Timmy, what does the 7-0 start mean? When you look at Milwaukee's stats, and there aren't many stats that mean anything beyond three-point shooting and percentage in the NBA, Milwaukee shoots them great, they defended great, and they happen to have the best rebound percentage in the league. When you're doing all that, you're going to win a lot of games. That man, Tim Kalashaw. I sold. How about you? The most underrated free agent signing of the offseason was Mike Budenholzer as head coach of Milwaukee. Remember, no Giannis, no Kawhi. This is funny. 
Kawhi Leonard now, they've played two road games. He hasn't made the trip. So we all thought that Kawhi, will he like Toronto? He's yet to leave the country. In the <laughs> it's always good when you set up a story with this is funny. I, I gave you a little laugh there, Frank, to help you out. How about you, George? What did you think's funny about this? Uh, I think it's funny that Jason Kidd had a similar roster and couldn't do anything with it. Mike Budenholzer shows how much coaching matters in the NBA today. He's one of the best coaches in the NBA, particularly when it comes to offense, brings that Spurs system. Look, he's made a big impact there, as big an impact as anyone. Frank said it. Mm-hmm. And how about you, Woody? I have a 14-point answer for you. They didn't have the Greek freak, <laughs> freak last night, but they had the geek freak. They had, what, seven guys in double figures? This is the best team in the Eastern Conference, and nobody talked about it. Seven yes, that's why we're doing the story, because they're 7-0 and in the Eastern Conference, Woody Page, and nobody was talking. Yes, that's exactly why we were talking about it today. You're going the wrong way, Woody. I got to say, George, you really came back strong. But you're still getting your first bolt of your career in Around the Horn. Smile for the picture. This is a good moment for you. Ah, close enough. Up. Page is done, too. Cali Troy Sola. Showdown next. Geico presents eyewitness interviews with inanimate objects. This is Belinda Collins, live on the scene of a recent hailstorm. Here to describe the event, a football. Bro, I was just hanging on the roof when this gnarly storm starts dropping baseball-sized hail. I mean, the shingles got beat up. A few windows looked broken. It was savage. Did you do anything to help? Nah, bro. I was in survival mode. Your football can't help you in a hailstorm, but the Geico Insurance Agency can help you get covered for personal property damage. Call Geico to see how affordable homeowners insurance can be. Dallas show, I sold a good looking showdown. Doing the same things over and over and over and expecting a different result then. You know, that's insanity, so you probably don't want to be around when my patients run out. That's after T Wolves 124, Lakers 120. Tim at two and five. Is it time for LeBron to lose patience? No, I mean you gotta think about all those Miami and Cleveland teams that got off to better to bad starts that had better rosters. He's gonna have to be more patient than this with a team of ill-fitting parts oh tim let me give you a little geography lesson he used to play in the eastern conference with miami and cleveland now he's in the west when you start two and five that's a big time hole to get into plus he doesn't have that secondary star like he had in cleveland and miami Hmm, i didn't consider that frank you've won me over and you get a point as your reward we'll move on shout out to who's your four college football playoffs first rankings tonight frank start us off we uh, we're looking at Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, one, two, and three. Who's your four? Now, you got to make it LSU because you got the big game this weekend, Alabama in Baton Rouge. So you might as well put them fourth now because if they get blown out this weekend, it's going to be a long time until you see them at four. I actually think it might be Michigan. They're the only team that's lost. They lost on opening weekend, close game at South Bend. So they lost to one of the three unbeatens up in front of them. LSU, obviously. They could pull off the upset would jump in next week. Wow, that's the answer I was looking for. That's pulling off the upset. Although, I was really looking for UCF. Nobody gave me that. But, Callis Show, what you gave me is good enough. 30 seconds of face time. Uh, this caused me great pain after years of defending the BCS on this show. And I was right about all that. I'm not saying I'm wrong now. Oh, boy. I am now coming no. out in favor. <laughs> reluctantly. No, you're wrong. Of an 18-playoff. Uh, the 14-playoff yeah. isn't working. The fact that they just ignore conference championships and last year let Alabama in without even playing in it, you can't do that. So at least with eight, oh, this kills me. At least with eight, you get the five <laughs> conference championships and three wild cards. It'd be a bad This system, is an incredible turn of events for you, Tip oh, I, I applaud it. All right. Like eight Enough of this. Now. now to the good stuff. Tomorrow, our favorite show of the year, the Halloween special. Who will grace us with their presence? What can Israel possibly do that will one-up his back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back winning performances? Do not miss it.